We thank you again, God, for a grand opportunity to be able to stand here and try our best to uh, worship you this day in spirit and also in truth. And we are certainly encouraged by uh, of some families that have uh, shared a part of their life by participating with us this morning. They're from Washington, and we are very delighted and very encouraged for your presence. May God bless you in a mighty, mighty special way. Uh, for those that are uh, sharing in our virtual worship, those that are on Zoom, perhaps, uh, those that are on Facebook or even YouTube, we are very thankful again and encouraged by your, your presence, wherever you might be. But again, it means an awful lot to us uh, that you're here, and we thank God so very much uh, for that. We'd like to uh, mention, if you would, uh, some folks that we are aware of that are on our sick list that we need to pray for. Uh, let's keep in mind uh, Tandice Evans and her family. Also, uh, Danny Moore recovering from surgery. Let's keep Danny in prayer. And also, uh, Thomas Cena. I, I believe her last name is Smith. I really should know that last name, uh, but certainly a, 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 they are a part of uh, our family. And so, Right now, she is in the uh, medical use. She has visited with us uh, doing our gospel meeting. Matter of fact, came every night, the last one that we had. So if you would, please, let's keep uh, Thomasina uh, in our, our prayers. I want to thank those that were uh, participants this morning in our ladies' Bible class. I know they had a wonderful time. Uh, our prayer is certainly that God continues to bless that class and bless it in a mighty, mighty special way. Also today, be it God's will, we'll try to uh, say this again at the end of our conclusion of our uh, service today, that men's uh, Bible class today at 4 p.m. at the building. And uh, we, want, we want you to uh, have this book right here. They're the same books, uh, just later editions. Uh, again, uh, Christian Leadership Handbook is the title. So uh, look in your homes and make sure you bring your copy uh, this day. Again, it could be a green one or perhaps even the gold color. But again, today at 4 p.m., men's uh, Bible class. If you would right now, let us go to the great God above uh, in prayer. The God, we're very thankful again for life and for strength, the ability to move, the ability to uh, hear, feel, taste, see, hear, and even understand some things about this life. Thank you, dear God, for uh, granting us the opportunity to be numbered with those that are living for. We know it's not because we've been so smart or so kind or, or so good, but only because of your love and your mercy. And we are indebted to you in, in, in an enormous way. And so we thank you again for allowing us this grand privilege and opportunity. We ask you, dear God, to uh, guide the words that will come out of our mouth, guide our attitude. Help us, dear God, to teach and to preach your word in such a way that it will uh, encourage, that it will be a, a measure to help folk come closer to you perhaps than ever before. We pray for our country, dear God, but not only the uh, United States of America, but the entire world. We pray for our president, that you bless him, aid him, give him the things that he stands in need of. We pray to God that you help us to remember that no matter how terrible life appears to get or even gets, that with you on our side, we can overcome any obstacle, any pain, any issue that arises in our lives. And yes, we pray right now for those that we've mentioned earlier, for Tandis and her family, that you bless them and bless them in a mighty, mighty special way. Uh, that you be with Danny, dear God, and aid him in his recovery. Also, we pray for Thomasina, dear God, that you aid her, whatever is going on, that the doctors may be able to uh, clearly and rightly uh, diagnose the kinds of things that need to be dealt with. But again, dear God, at the end of the day, we know you are sitting high, looking low, and you are still in control. We pray for our audiences, dear God, wherever they might be, that you bless each and every one of us and the families that we represent. It is in the mighty name of Jesus that we ask it all and give thanks to you. Amen. Good morning. Turn on me to 319. 319. I'm going that way. Sing the first and last stanza. <clears throat> 319. I'm going that way. First and last stanza. We got it. Let's sing. I've heard of a land of joy and peace and a wonderful life. A beautiful place, a mansion fair, and skies ever bright. Where all who believe the Savior did forever shall stay. 
And having been saved by grace divine, I'm going that way. I'm going that way. I'm going that way. And Jesus the Savior I adore is with me each day. I'm clinging to him and ever to strain. He is singing his praises all day long. I'm going that way. I know I shall meet him at the gate when trials are past. I know I shall meet him face to face in glory at last. When for watching me, then when we meet, well done, he will say, for trusting his soul, redeeming love, I'm going that way, I'm going that way, I'm going that way, and Jesus the Savior, is with me each day. I'm clinging to him and never to stray. He is singing his sails all day long. I'm Good morning. Welcome to the Folly Road Church of Christ Sunday morning worship service. Glad to have those that are present and those that are by Zoom or Facebook or however you may be able to hear. Thank you for being with us this morning. Scripture text for this morning's lesson is going to be found in the book of Luke. The chapter is 15, and the verses are 1 through 4. Luke chapter 15, and the verses are 1 through 4. Beginning at, at verse number 1. Then draw near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, this man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if you lose one of them, does not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he finds it? That concludes the scripture reading of Luke chapter 15, verse 1 through 4. And it's a blessing to hear and to do God's holy and divine word. Let us pray. Father in heaven again, Lord, we are so happy to come this morning. We come not under our own power, but by the power that you allow us to have. It is by you that we are able to move and and we are able to have our very being that's in you. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we are able to be alive and well at this place and not at the judgment this morning. Father, we thank you for the privilege that we have as being members of your son's body, that we can come to a place like this. At a time like this where we can, together, we can worship you, I pray, in spirit and in truth. Father, we thank you for all the things that you allow us to to, to enjoy in this, this life. We, we have the privileges of using all our faculties and all uh, our body parts and all that. We can use these things for your honor and for your glory. Father, we thank you for those that are visiting with us. 
We ask you to bless their hearts and their minds and give them safe passage up and down as they travel. But Lord, we ask you to help them to uh, understand your word and do those things that are pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Father, we ask you, your blessings upon all those that are in the land of the hearing this morning, that they may hear your word and grow up to the honor and the glory of you and your son, Jesus. Father, we ask your blessings upon the speaker this morning and crown his head with wisdom and knowledge and have him do and say those words that will encourage those that are falling down. Lift those up that are, that are weak. Even, Father, encourage those that are strong. Help us all to do those things that will lead us to that heavenly place that Jesus has gone to prepare for those that love is reappearing. Help us, Father, to do all that we can while we can, that we may give you the honor and the glory. Father, we ask you to be with us now and forever. In Christ's name we pray. Let us all say amen. Number 684, first and last stanza, 684. <clears throat> this world is not my home, first and last stanza. <clears throat> Number 684, first and last stanza, we got it? Let's sing. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up. Some with me on the blue, the angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Just up in glory land will live eternal. The saints on every hand are shining victory. Their songs of sweetest praise drift back from heaven. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels back to me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, oh, Lord you know I have no friend like you. If heaven not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't be let a home in this world anymore. I'd like you to do it, please, to open your Bibles uh, to the book of Luke, chapter, chapter number 15. And we'd like to begin around verse number one, Luke chapter. Uh, 15, and we like to notice around verse uh, number one. Luke 15, we begin around verse number one. We find these words. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man received the sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he finds it? 
want to use for a, a subject, an I, their message this morning. Why the angels in heaven rejoice? Why the angels in heaven rejoice? The text starts out sharing with us that there are some folk that are disturbed. They're very disgruntled. They're, they're mad, right, downright mad with Jesus. They are, they are grumbling. They're mumbling. What they're mumbling about, the Bible says, is that Jesus is receiving, that is, it appears that he is socializing as if these folk are his friends. They're upset because he's socializing or receiving uh, these folks. And the Bible says he doesn't have the audacity, according to these uh, Pharisees and scribes, to even eat with them. Now, uh, the folk that are uh, the focal point of, of their uh, demeaning spirit is, uh, are folk that are identified as the sinners, the publicans. The sinners are, are those, no doubt, that are the prostitutes, those that are uh, thieves, those that are uh, the liars, those that have uh, the bad reputation. And also those that are the publicans, those that are, are Jews, but apparently appear to have sold out to the Roman government and have taken advantage of even their own people. And so the Bible says these so-called uh, Pharisees, those that have uh, the specific mindset that's just straight down the line, they are upset with Jesus. And so the Bible says Jesus shares with them uh, uh, three parables. I want you to understand when you talk about parables uh, that Jesus has a way of how he introduces a number of his parables. Uh, uh, let's check the book for a moment. The book of Luke chapter 11, around verse number five. Luke 11, around verse number five. Uh, uh, watch uh, how, how Jesus, Jesus has a way to, to draw folk in uh, in regard to grabbing their attention. And so time, sometimes to use just some, some simple expressions, just a few words, but watch how powerful they are. In Luke, if you were chapter 11, around verse number five, he introduces a parable. Watch how he does it. The Bible says, he says, and he said unto them, which of you, very simple, which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, friend, Lend me uh, three loaves. And so the Bible says he gets them to look at themselves. When it came to prayer here, he, he, the idea basically is uh, as a friend going to another friend and recognizing you got a problem, you expect your friend to do something about it. What man would not expect his friend to deal with this problem? And so the same idea is found in Luke chapter 15. Watch what the Bible says. In Luke 15 again, Notice what the Bible says around uh, verse number four. Verse three says, and he spake this parable unto them saying, what man of you, again, grabbing their attention, what man of you having a what? A hundred sheep. If he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness to go after uh, that which is lost until he find it. Now remember Parables were designed. A definition says it's to lay alongside. Take that which is familiar to help folk understand something greater. But the parables also were designed uh, to cause folk to make a judgment based on the obvious facts. Also, what the Lord will do now, since you are highly upset with these people, and when you are highly upset with people, sometimes you look at them funny. You don't treat them the same. You don't talk to them the same. And so what the Lord will do now is get them to make a judgment based on the information or facts that's presented to them. And so he says, here is what I want you to consider. Verse number four. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that sheep? Notice this. The Bible says now, around verse number four again, what man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, watch it again, and go after that which is lost, when? Until he what? Find it. He will not stop after one mile. He will not stop after 10 miles or 15 or 20 miles. The Bible says he will not stop until he what? Find it. 
It doesn't matter the weather is cold, it's wet, it's harsh. The Bible says, what man of you, if you lose one of your sheep, you will do whatever is necessary, how long it takes to what? Find that one sheep. And the Bible says now around verse number five, and when he have what? Found it. He lay upon his shoulders rejoicing, and when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have what found my sheep, which was what? Lost. Then Jesus says, I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Now, let's consider what has happened here. The Bible says that here is a shepherd. What's on the line here? The shepherd's what? Reputation is on the line. What is involved here? What's involved here is that we have a shepherd that's lost something. And so the Bible says that he will do whatever is necessary, however long it takes, no matter what the condition is, what? To find that which was what? Lost. And so the Bible says that now evidently, hopefully gravitating in their heart, they recognize that there is something of worth, something of value, even for folks that are considered sinners and even public kids. And so, as we look at the text, he says, just like the jubilation, the, the joy that was expressed by that one who came and rejoiced over getting back that which you lost. The idea here, he says also, church, is that number one, he does not scold the animal. He does not seem to say, you see what you made me do. I've lost time. I've lost energy. I've even lost money. But the Bible says without any rebuke. He grabs the sheep, puts him on his shoulder, and he what? Takes him home. And when he gets home, what does he do? He encourages those that are loved ones to what? Enjoy what has happened to him. And so, church, what we're saying this morning as we study this parable, there are some obvious things that are cause us to be happy and overjoyed by even one sinner. If God thinks that much about a sheep, if heaven is so happy when that occurs, we ought to be what? Happy when somebody returns to the fold of God. And so he continues. And he says around verse number eight, either what woman having 10 pieces of silver, if she lost one piece, does not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently Till she find it. And when she has found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repented. When you think about a coin, that coin. It's not just a piece of metal, but it's been molded, it's been minted, and it has uh, the face of someone very important on the coin. It not only has the face of what's important on the coin, but also some kind of description, subscription of the name of the person, and perhaps of the country of the person. And so what the Bible is saying, now when they heard Jesus. They could see the coin lost. And what that represents, church, is man, we have what? Lost. We are lost in regard to what God has left us with. We have forfeit what God wants us to be. Let's check the book. In Psalms 8, if you would, beginning around verse number 1. Let's check the book. In the book of Psalms, Psalms number 8, around verse number 1. Listen to what the great book says. David writes this about man and his relationship to God. He says it this way. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babies and sucklings has thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. 
When I consider your heavens, Lord, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is, me, what is it about us? What makes us so special? What makes you take the time with us? What is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visit him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. And so what has happened, we have lost that. We have gone out of sight, church. And so the idea is just like the coin is lost and not in circulation. When we are not what we ought to be for God, we are out of sight. We are out of circulation. And God is not represented as he ought to be or glorified as God ought to be. But the Bible says the woman put the light on. She swept the floor and she found the coin. And I want us to uh, remember this, that no matter whether folks stepped on the coin, whether it was balled up, if you could ball up like paper money, take a hundred dollar bill or a thousand dollar bill, wrinkle it, throw it up in the ground, uh, uh, throw it to people, uh, step on it, kick it. You know something? When it is restored, it still has what? Value. And so what the Lord is saying, although it's lost, it's out of circulation, it does not represent God as an order. When you find it, church, it still has value. And so when the coin was found and brought back, the Bible says she, she called the folk together. And again, around verse number nine, the Bible says, and when she had found it, she called her friends and her neighbors together saying, rejoice with me, for I found the peace which I, I lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is what joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Why is heaven happy, church? Why are the angels happy? Because number one, one who has been lost has now escaped hell fire. That's one reason. Another reason is it shows someone now is willing to trust God for their salvation. What does it mean, church? It means that now someone's heart's been touched enough, church, to recognize that without God, they cannot make it. What does it mean, church? It means that now God is glorified. God is honored. And so the Bible says heaven is happy. And church, we ought to be happy when someone has been lost. Is now found. In each case, the Bible teaches there was a celebration. And I want us to be aware that we ought to have a celebration. And so now, as he gets into the third parable, again, it intensifies. He started out with one out of a hundred, that's one tenth. And then he went to, uh, uh, that's one one hundred. Then he went to one out of ten, which is one tenth. And now he will deal with one out of two, intensifying to those that are listening how important there is to recognize that there is worth, there is in value of that which has been lost, church. Sinners are lost. The publicans perhaps may have been lost, but they have value, they have worth. And until you recognize that, we will not treat each other the way we ought to treat one another. So now he talks about two boys. And you know the story. When the Bible says it's called the younger son, there's the older son. The Bible talks about the younger son desire to uh, uh, get up stuff from his daddy right now. And the Bible says that there, there is no fussing, no analyzing. He gives the boy what he desires. And the Bible says he goes off and he squanders everything that he has, church. And then the Bible says, while he's out there, things are so bad that he's a Jew, but he's willing to be sent out in the field and eat with the hogs. Watch this. While he's out there, the Bible says a famine comes. And I want to say something about that. Once you get out there, there are some things that's beyond your control. And the only reason he doesn't eat 
The half is that the Bible says no one gives us. What am I saying? Sometimes the only way we turn and get ourselves together is something has occurred in our life that we can do nothing but turn to the Lord. And so while he's out there, and the famine comes again, not by his control. He has no control over that. But sometimes God intercedes. And put some things in our lives or take some things out of our lives just to get our attention. Why? Because he cares that much about us. And so the Bible says, around verse 17, let's go there quickly. That after going through all that he's going through, the Bible says around verse number 17, these words. And when he came to himself. He said, how many hired servants of my father have bread enough and to spare? And I perish, he says, with hunger. The only way we remove ourselves from our condition is we first got to reflect on where we are and why we are where we are. And so the Bible says, when he thinks about his life, he recognizes that the folk that work for my daddy are so blessed by my daddy that they don't worry about eating, they don't worry about anything, and I'm out here, his son what? Perishing. So one thing if you're going to try to get back is think about why you're here and what you're missing. Sometimes as folks say, you don't miss your water until the well runs dry. And so the Bible says to us that he first takes a reflection of his life now and what it could be back at home. He decides that well, when, when I come back, I, I, I'm going to uh, address my father, let him know I've sinned, and all I want is just to be a servant. That's all I want. And so not only does he reflect but it makes a resolution. See, you can think something as long as you want in your condition, but if you stay where you are, nothing will change. So the Bible says he arose, he got up, he moved. And then the Bible also says he recognized his guilt again. And until we recognize that we ain't what we ought to be, that we are nasty, that we are dirty, we need cleaning up, nothing will change. See, when you think about life, if you feel you're all right where you are, you will make no changes. If not, until we confront our condition and recognize we can do better. And as long as where we are, we cannot make it without God. And so he reflects. He makes a resolution. He admits his guilt between God and even himself. And then the Bible says he returns home. This is where we're going to go. He returns home. Watch what the great book says. Around verse 18, he says, I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me one of thy hired servants. That's all I want to be. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. And had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and, and kissed him. Now watch this. On his way back home, the Bible shares with us that really when you look at this lesson, every lesson that you look at in the parables really was about God. About what, 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 what God is and what God will do, how merciful he is, how forgiving he is, and how joyous he is when he sees a change in folk life. So the Bible says, as the boy is on the way back home. The father runs to him. And back then, uh, uh, anyone of any status would not run because uh, their garments were flung. And so there's, there's some shame there. And what's interesting, church, as we study God's great book, the Bible, the Bible says that Jesus despised the shame. It did not matter what folks thought, how it looked to the world, that he was still what? 
died for our sins. And so what the father says, I don't care what they think of the boy. I don't care what they think about me. What I'm here to do is protect my son and show him that I care. He's ready to come back and I'm ready to take him back. And church, that's how the church must act now. When someone messes up, so often we are dwelling on what the person gave up, the mistakes that they made, how awful a condition that they're in, when we ought to be just happy that God has spared their life and they have the desire to want to what? Come back. And so the Bible says, before he did one thing, his father was all over him with hugs and kisses. Before he even said to his father, I'm sorry. And sometimes, church, we don't need to be wondering where you've been, how long you've been there, and what you did. That's irrelevant. What's relevant is he's back or she's back. That's what's important. No indication in the story where the, where the father ever talked to the boy and asked him about what's happened or scolded him. I, I, I told you before you shouldn't have left. The father does not do that because what's most important is he's back. And so the Bible says, now the father will shows the boy some love more than he can even imagine. Around verse number uh, 20 again. And he arose and came to, his, came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven in thy sight. And I'm no more worthy. And to be called your son. But watch this. But the father said to his servants, bring me the what? The best robe. And put it on him. And put a what? Ring on his hand. And what? Shoes on his feet. Watch the grace of God here, church. The Bible says, no doubt the boy's been in the pig pen. He no doubt stinks. He smells bad. No doubt he's ugly. No doubt he's ragged. He is not fit to be seen. But the Bible says what? Get the robe, get my robe, the kingly robe, put it on and cover him up. And when you think about what Jesus did for us, he covered us up with his blood and with his righteousness on the cross. Let's check the book. In the book of St. Corinthians, if you would, chapter 5, around verse number 21. Listen to what the great book says. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, around verse number 21. Listen to what the great book says. In 2 Corinthians 5, around verse 21, the Bible says this. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. Why? That we might be made the what? Righteous of God in him. And so he clothed him, covered up his nakedness, his ugliness, his nastiness, his stinkiness. And when God sent Jesus to die for us, we accepted what he's offered to us. That's what God does for us. He covers up our mess. But then the Bible says, not only does he do that, around verse number 23, the book says that he gave him, verse 22, not only the robe, but the Bible says he gave him the ring. Get the ring. Get the ring that shows authority when you stamp it in some wax and put it on a seal. That says that it's all right. Give it to him because what? I've given him the authority to transact, but now he is not a prodigal son. He is a son that has due ownership and rights just like he had before he left. Put some shoes on his feet. Back then, slaves didn't have shoes, but those that were members of the family had shoes. Let folk know that he is my son. He's part of the family. But not only that, the Bible says in verse 23, I got more for it. And bring out the what? Patty cat and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For this my son was with dead and is alive again. He was lost and he was found. And they began to be merry church. In every one of the parables, there was also the idea that there was a celebration 
celebration when the lamb was, was taken and brought back. He called the court together and they were happy. The Bible says heaven was happy. When the coin was tied and brought back, the Bible says also that the angels were happy. And now when the boy gets home, the Bible says there is still what? A celebration. God thinks enough that when the son comes back, he stops heaven for a moment and they have a, what? a celebration church. And that says to us, if they celebrated heaven, we ought to celebrate down here for one who comes back, who was once lost, and now the Bible says is found. You would think that everything is hunky-dory and everything's all right. But let's check the book, and we'll finish with this. The Bible says there was another son, though. Verse number 25. Now, as the elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked, what these things mean? What's, what's going on up in there? What, what's happening at, at the house? And he said unto him, thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed a fatty calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And the Bible says he was angry. It would not go in. And therefore came his father out and entreated him. And yes, he said to his father, Lo, <laughs> and, and, and this was really insulting yes, that he says, Can you imagine your, your mom and daddy uh, coming to you and talking to you and say, No, look, 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 no. So he was insulting to his father. He says, Look. And he answered, Verse 29, he answered and said to his father, Look, look, there are many years do I serve thee. Neither transgress at any time thy commandment. And yet you never gave me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son, didn't even call him his brother, but soon as this your son, which hath devoured thy living, with harlots, God has killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art either ever that is with me, and all that I have is thine. It was me. It was just the right thing to do. We shall make merry and be glad. For thus thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. Let's finish up this way here. The boy will not go in the house. And sometimes there are folks like that. When something good happens to somebody else, we don't want to be a part of it. We are envious. We are jealous. And that's what the boy was. But don't forget that this message is to the Pharisees and the scribes. And you can you imagine them for a moment? They're saying, this boy did not earn his way back home. And his father gave him all that stuff. And he did not. Call it. And sometimes, church, that's our attitude. That we believe folk got to earn God's grace. But grace is not something you can earn. It is something that's given. And so he's upset. And so the Bible says that the Father says in so many words, all these years you've been with me, you have access to every single thing that I have. And the idea is almost like uh, somebody getting a, a, a healing for, for maybe cancer. And, and they, they thank God, they thank God, they thank God. But then they forget every day that God has allowed them to live. They don't have tuberculosis. They don't have arthritis. Uh, 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 they, they, they don't have heart trouble or, or diabetes. They don't have all of God has done what? God has given his grace. God has given his mercy. God has given forgiveness. God has been awful long. He's taken a lot of stuff for a long time. He's given us help. He's given us protection. He's given us a peace of mind. And yet we are not thankful. And this is what he was saying to the boy. I've given you all this. For all these years, and you're upset because I do one celebratory thing for a boy that was lost, had lost everything. And sometimes, folks, 
Forget about what God does for us every day. We are upset when somebody seems to get the attention or get the news or get the glory. When God is blessing us each and every day for things that we can't even do by ourselves. And so heaven is happy. The angels are happy church. Why? Because we got somebody that has accepted the responsibility of their actions and consequences and is willing to now come back to the Lord before the day and dying to live. And so there might be one today that recognize I've done some stuff out there that's just, just uh, unthinkable. But God will forgive you. Here's the story here. This boy had lost everything, done everything except what a child of God ought to do. But what? The father was willing to get ready to take him. And that's how God is, church. He is ready and willing. No matter what you've done, how long you've done it, how bad it's been, God is willing to take you back. Heaven is happy when you come back. God is happy. Christ is happy. The Holy Spirit is happy. And believe it or not, we're going to be happy too when you come back. And so if there's one that desires to become a child of God and come back to a loving father, this is what you need to do. In John chapter 8, verse 24, Jesus says, unless you believe that I am he, he who, he who was chosen to come and die for mankind's sin, the anointed one, the Messiah himself. Unless you believe that on he, you will die, he says, in your sin. Then the Bible says we also not only must believe in Jesus, but we must repent. In the book of Acts, Acts chapter 17, commanded all men everywhere to repent. I don't care who you are, how much money you got, I don't care who you know. Everybody, the Bible says, is commanded to repent. And it says there's going to come a day that the Lord's going to judge the world. And the fact is, he proves it because he has Cause Jesus to get up from the grave. And then he says, we must also be willing to confess Jesus to be the son of God. That teaching is there. In the book of Acts, Acts chapter 8, Ethiopian unit finds out about Jesus, finds out that Jesus wants him to be baptized. And then the Bible says that the preacher Philip says unto him, if thou believest, thou mayest. And somehow, some way, he made it known that Jesus Christ was the son of God. And then the Bible says in that same chapter, chapter 8, that they went both down into the water, was showing that baptism is not a sprinkling, not a pouring, but it's a burial. Those that do that become God's children. So if there's someone today that desires to do that, let someone know. Let us know. Again, my number is 843-364-9836. Again, 843-364-9836. Or some congregation of the Lord's people that will teach what we've just shared in order for one to become a child of God. We ask you to please keep that in mind. We're now going to continue our services. And the next item of worship that we will participate in, be it God's will, is the partaking of the Lord's Supper. In the book of Acts, Acts chapter 20, we find that it was on the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread. Around verse 7, we find these words. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on tomorrow, and continued his speech until midnight. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 11, around verse number 23, the apostle Paul writes about a condition where folk were not taking the Lord's Supper with the right frame of mind. It appears that they just had forgot that that's the primary reason of, of why they were coming together. And so to address that situation in chapter number 11, around verse number uh, 23, watch what the great book says. He says, for I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. Thus do in remembrance of me. After the same man also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he come. Let us give thanks for the bread and also for the fruit of the vine. Dear God, we're very thankful that you've allowed us to have an opportunity to participate, to share in what Jesus did 
over 2,000 years ago die on a cruel and rugged cross. Thank you no, 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 not only for the opportunity to share in the suffering, but, but thank you for uh, the opportunity to look ahead that one day Jesus is coming back again. We ask you please to bless the, the bread which represents his body, the cup, the fruit of the vine that represents his blood. Help us to take it in such a way that you will get the glory and you will get the honor. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we ask it all and give thanks to you. Amen. This now brings us down to another portion of our service, which is the uh, collection. We find in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 16, also the day that appears to be the time when they corporately came together. And so now an offering is to be taken up for the poor saints in Jerusalem. And the apostle Paul writes these words, he says, now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you live by him a store, that there be no gathering when I come. And then in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, around verse 6, verse number 7, he gives us the frame of mind that we need to have as we, as we give to the Lord. And he says around verse 6, verse number 7, But thus I say, he was so sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he was so bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purpose in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Let us do. Let us give thanks for what God has allowed us to collect. The God, we thank you very much for those who have taken the time to share a part of their life, but also a part of the 
abundance that you allow us to have, the way to make a living. We ask you please to bless the funds that we've had, bless the hands that made it all possible, but help us to use it in such a way that you'll get the glory, that you'll get, that you'll get the honor. It's in your son's precious name that we ask it all and give thanks to you. Amen. We'd like to, uh, again, uh, close. We just certainly pray for the, the uh, collection, but I'd like to, to close out. Uh, and then those that are able to stick around, I'd like to just share a couple of thoughts with you. And again, certainly uh, uh, make mention of the names that we've gotten that have blessed our audience today from, from the state of Washington. But let's pray, everybody. Dear God, we're very thankful again that you've allowed us to worship in our prayers, that we worship you in spirit and also in truth. Help us, dear God, to take advantage of every means that you've allowed us to make this possible. Uh, we pray that there'll be one day an opportunity for us to come back and to assemble as you certainly would have us to do as we find your folk in the book of the Bible doing. But right now, uh, you would bless us to have a way to uh, try to accomplish that in some way, and that is virtually. Bless us, dear God, and help us to continue to keep you first in our lives. It is in the mighty name of Jesus we ask it all and give thanks to you. Amen. Again, thank you so very much. I'd like to uh, just make mention, I have the names up here, those from Washington uh, that are with us today. Uh, Lexi McCloy, is that correct? Glad to have you. Uh, also, um, Jennifer McCloy, uh, we're very thankful again for your presence. And then we have, uh, is that Kira or Kara? Kira, uh, Kira Carpenter, and also uh, Kathy Carpenter. Uh, you're a long way from home, but prayerfully, uh, this can be a home for you while you're here. And we thank you so very much for uh, sharing a part of your life with us. And may God bless you in a mighty, mighty special way. Uh, I want to say to those uh, members of, uh, of Folly Road uh, in particular, uh, let's remember again uh, to our men, uh, we have uh, our class today. Uh, again, uh, this is the book that we, we want you to try to have, Christian Leadership Handbook. This is how it looks. Hopefully you have one in your possession. Again, that's today at 4 o'clock uh, at the building. I want to also say uh, that, thank God, uh, prayerfully, we may have our system in, maybe sometimes uh, next week, uh, in regard to us uh, uh, being able to do it in a decent and a, in a, in a, in a nice way in regard to uh, not having all of our uh, different devices around as we have now, but thank God that we do have them. And so prayerfully, we'll have that uh, in line perhaps by next week. And so what I'm saying to you is we're getting close uh, in regard to, to coming back. Uh, we still are aware that we'll still be practicing social distancing. Uh, we'll be uh, also uh, taking temperatures. We'll be wearing masks. We'll be having stations where uh, sanit sanitizers are, are, are put up. Uh, we'll be making sure that we go out different doors. Well, uh, uh, we're going to try our best to do what we can for. We are aware that we don't know how long before this thing will be over, if it's over, but we are aware that we'll still serve God with everything that we have, regardless of what happens. So again, I uh, look forward to that. And again, we thank you so very much. Again, those ladies that were in Lady Bible class, I know you had a grand time and prayerfully uh, you'll be looking forward to that again. And again, today, men, remember today at four o'clock, uh, men's uh, Bible class. Thank you so very much. And again, we're at the at the building. Okay, I, I think that's it. And again, we appreciate much those who are not members of Folly Road that take the time, share a part of your life with us. Thank you for your, for your kindness. We love you and appreciate you in a very high way. All right, everybody. Thank you so very much. And again, to those in Washington, we appreciate you very much. May God bless you and bless you real quick.